So many people we interviewed said they can speak their minds as long as they don't break the law. Are you convinced? The perception is that if you say anything that the government doesn't like, that you're going to be locked up, and that, that's nonsense. Uh, if you go on social media in China, what you'll see is a lot of criticisms on a lot of issues, uh, and they talk about it. The main difference in China is that if you try to organize, right, you say to people, let's get together and have a protest, and they will come and they will talk to you, but that also means that they're not going to tolerate those who just want to hold up a sign and protest. You know, we saw what happened in Hong Kong in the West. Uh, they, they look at Hong Kong and they say, oh, it's terrible. How about the year-long hiatus in business? And for one year, it, it was pure bedlam. Protesters basically broke into and destroyed all of the Starbucks. That is not constructive. And if you want to do that, yes, there is going to be things. You have to keep the uh, streets safe. You want to talk about human rights and freedom? When I can't go to work because there's a mob who might attack me, that's not freedom of expression, right? That's mob rule. Sean, would you say freedom of speech and freedom of press are rightfully and legitimately restricted in China? Or would you argue for more freedom in those areas? So we'll see if my answer makes the final cut. I think it's clear that individuals in China are smart. And there's a lot of very vibrant discourse, you know, criticism, um, support for various policies, various government officials. So I think on the micro level, there's definitely freedom of speech. But there's two other parts of this, right, that we have to look at. The first is the Great Firewall and access to the internet, right? Chinese netizens don't have access to media sites, Facebook, Twitter. Why do you think Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and some other websites are blocked in China? I understand why the government doesn't want to have Twitter and Facebook and these social media sites that are unwilling to follow the laws of China. I believe in freedom of speech, but there are limits to freedom of speech. It would be great if the government did a rethink on the Great Firewall. No, I, I disagree from this perspective. The internet in the last 20 years has become a weaponized. When you start saying about freedom of speech, what do you think about somebody who can create 20,000 bots? I mean, automated accounts spewing the same garbage, all right? How is that freedom of speech where I multiply my particular views because I can, because the internet allows that, all right? Is that good? I would love it if we had a free internet, but you cannot ignore the danger. China's government has done a great job in China. So I would recommend that there be a major reform, um, even more important than the, the Great Firewall, but the media. I do agree. China has a great story, and they have not been very good at, at telling it. But it's very, very difficult to just say, oh, just open, open things up and everything will be fine. You have an asymmetrical uh, situation between the international press and, and China's press. When we went into that hospital in Kashgar, rehab hospital, where they were helping kids who were between the ages of zero and six, Uyghurs, the vast majority, over 90% of the kids the there. Hospital. Yeah, and what was China's government doing for them? They were, for free, for six years, these kids could live in the hospital, get treatment. That's a great story. That needs to be shown. I'm tired of seeing on pictures of dancing Xinjiang pretty women. They should be telling the stories. Is it possible that it's pushed to you because it's your... <laughs> because I'm interested on Douyin and algorithms? <laughs> I think it is algorithms. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> you can talk to almost any foreigner here and they'll tell you the reality that they push out in the international press has really nothing to do with China. And it's just, uh, it seems uh, kind of sour grapes. So I can understand why the government is, you know, hesitant to allow that. Different studies have put confidence in the central governments at between 78 and 95 percent. Uh, it's 25 percent in the U.S. It does have the performance legitimacy that it's moved its country over those 40 years. I think the, one of the reasons you're getting high ratings for the Chinese government is people think they're competent. You know, you believe that if they say they can build a subway system or a high-speed rail, they can really do it. And that's an important part of governance. China should stay to the positive, keep pushing out the facts, 
How many people are being lifted out of poverty? How many people are joining the middle class? What's the rise in median income? And then show graphs. How do you make sure all the graphs actually can reach the American audience? There's a lot of hypocrisy on our side. We're paying, according to their Herald, uh, to a Zimbabwe Herald, we're paying a thousand bucks U.S. for negative stories on China. You know, the U.S. government has allocated 300 million U.S. dollars a year to implant stories that are negative against China's One Belt, One Road. It shows the, the lengths in which you're, you're pushing an, an international um, disinformation campaign that's aimed directly at China. So you have to point out the inconsistencies. You have to have people who are talking about it in effective ways. We really don't have a free internet largely because we have an oligopolistic system, largely in Silicon Valley, which has been supported by the government in its efforts to maintain its oligopoly by the U.S. government. If you look around the world, there is no other country or region. Look at Europe, look at India. They don't really have independent tech sectors. China developed an independent tech sector because it wasn't overwhelmed by the already established monopolies coming out of Silicon Valley. I would break up those monopolies, but that's not in China's power. So maybe the next best thing is to limit the ability of those monopolies to interfere in Chinese or any other country's affairs.